Hey friends, every single user of Ableton 12 will greatly benefit from watching this video all the way through. I'm gonna show you several different essential tips and tricks for the browser that will make it an amazing, time-saving joy to use. Let's go. Okay, so the single most time-saving feature that you can use inside of Ableton's browser, and you could already use it before Ableton 12, but they've actually improved it here, is the classic Command F. If you hit Command or Control F, you can search, for example, let's do pigments. And look, there it is, right there. So let me show you how useful this is. I could be on my master track. Let's say I've got a, yeah, a limiter. I'm doing something else. I've got something else selected. I'm interacting with something down here. I can simply click Command F and I have jumped over to the browser and I could search like Pro Q or something. And blam, I have Pro Q and I could drag that into another track. Like this is so fast. Let me go up here and I'll just search, uh, I don't know, transient, bam. Now I have my transient shaper. I can just drag into a track. Command or Control F is your best friend. You can pretty much find anything as fast as you can type, okay? So I just want to point that out first. That's so important. It's so useful. Do not forget Command or Control F. So the hallmark of any good browser, whether it's Ableton or Firefox or Chrome or whatever, is whether or not it gives you quick access to the tools that you need. An even better browser gives you multiple ways of organizing because not everyone's brain works the same way. This is precisely what Ableton has done here with the new browser in Ableton 12. Now let's take a look at what I've got going on here and I'm gonna show you all these different ways that you can organize this that it'll just make your life amazing and easy. So first of all, let's just look at this side right here. There are three main sections of your browser, collections, library, and places. You don't have to display all of this. And this is the first thing that people don't understand. When it comes to using a browser in a way that makes it efficient, don't display things that you don't use. It's so important to just get rid of the things that you don't use. So for example, I'm gonna hide a bunch of stuff. You can hover up here and click edit, okay? And so I'm gonna get rid of all this, these extra collections. I just don't need them, okay? I also don't need to display my tunings. I don't need to display my templates. I don't need to display clips, okay? So now, when, once you've done that, you hit done. Now look at this. All of a sudden, we've collapsed the browser down. So now we can see all three sections, collections, library, and places, right? So that alone can make your life a whole lot easier. Now, check this out. Down here, I've got retro synths, and these are all my retro synth plugins that I own. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> All my modern synths, you can see my modern synths are right here. All of my pianos, you can see they're right here. And all of my reverbs, you can see are right here. Even in pianos, you can see that there's an Ableton device in here. What is this? These are saved searches. But before we get here, I think it's important to understand how to get here and how you can set it up so that everything that you want to access in Ableton can be a library quick link right here, okay? We're gonna set this up. So let's first go over how to organize your samples. One awesome addition to Ableton's new browser is the filter tags. Now, if I click Command F, Command or Control F always goes back to all, which is why it's so powerful. Command or Control F will go to this all section, meaning that all of your available samples, all of your available plugins, anything that's in your browser is now searchable, okay? So the first thing that we can do with the filters is we can start to tag our samples. But before we get into tagging, I wanna show you something. Ableton's built-in samples that they have inside of the browser have all been pre-tagged. So of course you could click on drums and you could click on kick, for example, and anything that has been tagged with kick, as you can see, I've tagged a bunch of my kicks, uh, will appear as well as all of the Ableton built-in samples, right? So maybe I'll do one that I haven't done yet. So clap, you can see all these clap samples. These are samples that come in Ableton's built-in library. So let's say that I wanted to add my claps, my clap collection, if you will. <laughs> I wanted to add my claps to Ableton's clap tag, okay? If I wanted to do that, you click on this guy, edit, okay? And then under edit, you wanted to find the relevant tag that has to do with the drum that you want. So for example, I would scroll down here and I would go to clap. See how clap is now an available tag? So what I could do in the All tab is hit Command F and search Clap. This is one way to do this. So now I've searched Clap, and now every single thing that's named Clap under Drums Clap will appear. That's not gonna help us because we're not gonna be able to add anything more to Clap, so I need to unclick this, okay? I think the best way to do this is to click Clear. This has cleared everything. But you can see that Edit is still open, and you can see that Clap is still in view, okay? So Command F, Clap. Now with no filters, anything that has clap in its name now appears. 
So all of this stuff, all of the claps that I've ever collected in my life <laughs> are available right here. So one time-saving tip that I can show you is you can simply go to whatever section. I know that these clap and snares right here, these are really nice samples. I like these. Okay, so I can click on the first one and I can scroll down to where they end. Check this out. If you hold shift, you can select all of them and guess what? Click clap, bam. Now all of those claps are in the clap tag. Okay, boom. So now check this out. I will clear everything. All right, everything's been cleared. Now I can click on clap. All right, now check this out. All those samples that I just added are in this. Bam, all of them. So not just Ableton's built-in claps that it has, but all the clap samples that I wanted to add are now living in clap. Now, you might be like, whoa, dude, but this is like super annoying. It's super annoying to have to go in here and click on filters, click down to clap and do all that. Well, there's a couple ways around this. Let's say, for example, I wanna look for something that I've already tagged. I've tagged a bunch of my kicks. Check this out. I'll go ahead and clear this, okay? Now watch this. You can simply put a hashtag in there and write kick, bam. Now all the things that are tagged kick will appear in the search results. It's literally that fast. Okay, let me show you again. Let's do the claps. Let's go ahead and clear this. All you gotta do is hit hashtag clap. Bam, now all the things that have been tagged clap are right there, okay? The search bar is your friend, all right? At the end of the day, this browser has a trillion options, a trillion different ways to organize your samples, all right? Now, let's do something else. I've just searched clap, and clap tag is the thing that I have here. Another thing you can do is you can save this search. So if I click plus here, all right, clap. <laughs> now clap is available right here on the left. And this is, in my opinion, the best way to use the browser. What are the things that you use all the time? I don't necessarily use claps all the time, so it may not make sense to put claps on the side of my browser, but at the end of the day, I definitely use plugins a lot. So I'm gonna actually delete this, remove from sidebar, okay? I'm gonna remove that, but let's go ahead and do something else. Let's go ahead and find all of my compressor plugins that I like to use, okay? So pay close attention here. This is where you can really super benefit from this, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that my edit tag thing is open, all right? Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is instead of using all of this nonsense that Ableton has, has created, I'm gonna create my own custom tag. First of all, let's create a custom group, okay? So I've called mine Earthcry, okay? Because that's my one of my artist names, right? But you could click add group, but you could say whoever you are, so artist, right? So this is your artist name or whatever. And then the next thing you can do is you can add whatever. What is the thing that you use all the time? What are the plugins that you use all the time? Let's say uh, top plugins, or another thing you could call it is every mix. Like, do you have a plugin you use on every mix or something? I don't know, right? So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to add this to mine though. Okay. So mine is Earthcry. So I'm going to add a tag. Let's tell you what, let's do it this way. I'm going to do just my multi-band compressors. Let's do it multiband comps because you can name this whatever you want. See, because here's the thing. If you're using all of the naming conventions that Ableton has used, that doesn't help your brain. Your brain works the way your brain does, not the way that someone else set it up for you. That's why we're doing this, okay? So multiband comps is now a editable tag feature. So one way that I could do this is I could simply search directly for the multiband compressors that I want to use. Let's go ahead and hit command F. Okay, so multiband Multiband dynamics, of course I'm gonna add that to my multiband comps, right? Because that's like one of the best ones. Another one is the new X6, but I wanna show you a different way of doing this, okay? So I could add it right here, but check this out. Another thing I can do is I can use the filter system to kind of filter down my plugins into the subcategories that I wanna use. So one thing I could do is I could go over to plugins, right? So now these are all my plugins. And of course I could click on AUV2. Why would I wanna do AUV2? Well, I'm a Mac user, and in my experience, AU plugins tend to be less crashy. They tend to run a little bit faster. Um, maybe this is changing with the silicon computers, but in my experience, I just like using these. So notice this, I can still search up here with my search, but I can have it filtered down to my AUV2 plugin. So, okay, now I can click on this guy and I could have clicked on it before, but I just wanted to get it down to what I wanted to use. Okay, so X6, I'm going to add that to my multiband comps. The next one I want to add is Pro MB. So Pro MB, and now you'll notice that 
I definitely, if I unclick this guy, you can see I definitely have all these different Pro MBs here, but I want to just use the AUV2. So I'm going to add that to my multiband comps, okay? Okay, cool. So I'm going to go back up to all. Now, this is a really important thing to do. If I click all, you'll notice that when you go in anywhere in the browser, check out how each one of these tabs will have different things open. Essentially, Ableton's new browser has different sections open depending upon what you have clicked on, right? If I click on all, it will just remember what I had, right? So now this is why it's so important to add your artist name at the bottom because it's so dead simple. If any of these stupid things are open, just shut them and click on yours, okay? And now if I click on multiband comps, check it out. All three of my multiband processors that I would ever want to use are sitting right here. For my workflows between multiband dynamics, multiband X6 and Pro MB, that's all the multiband that I ever need to use, right? So now I can simply hit plus and check this out. I'm saving my multiband compressors right here on the side of the browser. So I never have to deal with this nonsense. I never have to deal with this nonsense. All I got to do is be like, duh, I'm going to grab a multiband compressor and drag it and drop it into a track. Okay. It's right there. I want a retro synth. It's right there, right? Just so fast. So real quick, Ableton has recognized me in their EDU program and is currently offering anyone who joins my course community 30% off Ableton Live 12. This discount is both for upgrades and new licenses, and it stacks on top of any deals that Ableton is currently running. It just so happens that Ableton is presently running a 20% off sale. So if you enjoy my teaching style and you want to get the most thorough Ableton courses available, this is by definition the cheapest time to do so. My courses are chronological and optimized to raise your Ableton skills rapidly, and we have a super active private Discord where we have a bunch of fun sharing mixes, resources, and more. So if you want to check that out, the link is up in the corner or down in the description. Okay, let's get back to it. So let's go through this one more time, and I want to show you something that is really important to understand. Okay, so clearing any search result from the all tab, I'm going to search ultimate. So I'm going to drag my ultimate, <laughs> ultimate for a uh, crazy drum rack here. Essentially what this is, is a bunch of sampler instances and I can use this to make quick drum kits, right? Just by hitting like random. So this is something that I use all the time. Okay. So remember what we're doing is we're saving searches. So what I can do is I can go to edit, okay, and I can go down to EarthCry, and what I can add is a custom tag that is unique to me, okay, things that I always use. So what should I call this? I could call it tool belt, <laughs> right, things that I can reach for really quickly. Uh, I'm going to call it homies. These are my homies, all right? These are the, this is, this is a device that I always use, all right? So I've called it homies, right? So now it's been tagged as such. Let's do another one. What's another one I use? So soothe. Soothe 2, and I want to use the AU version. That's a homie, right? I use Soothe all the time. What else is a homie? Pro L. I'm using the browser really fast because I'm using what? I'm using Command or Control F. It's the fastest way to find anything, okay? These are the plugins that I use all the time. Pro Q. Pro Q3, AU. Bam, right? Now, I'm going to clear everything. Make sure that I'm in the All tab, okay? And now I could put I could go up to the top, for example, and search homies, right? Bam. Now all my homies are here and I can click plus and now I hit enter and bam again. None of this stuff matters. I can close filters completely down because the tools that I need are right here on the left. Okay. Now, a really important thing to understand is that I'm not you, okay? How my brain works is different than yours. You don't need to make retro synths and modern synths and pianos and reverbs and multiband and homies and things like that. Do it your way, whatever your way is. The really rad thing about this new browser is that you can save these searches and these searches are unique to who you are and what your workflow is. So to give you an example, I'm not going to go through all of my kick drums, for example, and add it to my browser tags. I'm just not going to do that. I don't need to. I like to make kick drums. I know where the kick drums that I want to use are inside of my user library, inside of my samples. Like, I just know where things are. I'm not worried about that. But maybe you are a sample-based artist and you're constantly sample hunting. It might make more sense for you to do that. And then save that search with the appropriate tags 
and tag all your samples and go through all that trouble. Go ahead and do it. If that's you, if that's going to be something that you're going to benefit from, you should absolutely do that. In my opinion, I don't need that. It's just not what I like to do. I like to synthesize most of my sounds. It's just what I like to do. So it's not unique to me or important to me to do that. But I will show you something that I think is really important for you to understand and as to why maybe it doesn't make as much sense to do this. So let's go ahead and we're going to grab a drum rack. So command F, going to the all tab, drum rack, bam, it's right there. Now within this drum rack, let's just go ahead and we'll use the browser system. All right, so I filtered it down to kick, but I still have drum in my search bar. So when I delete this, all of a sudden I'll have a million kicks. All right, so here's an electronic kick. So to wrap your brain around how amazing this new browser is, when you first download Ableton 12, you may notice that PAX has its classic little circle around it where it's uh, indexing all of your samples. The reason that Ableton 12 is doing this is that it also is indexing your samples and applying uh, some sort of machine learning algorithm to it to determine a couple things about the sample. Uh, what's the frequency content, what, how long is the sample, so on and so forth. And what this allows Ableton 12 to do is to do a thing called the similar sound search, which is this guy. So here's our sound, right? And what I can do is I can click on this button and now, if I scroll to the top, these are all the samples that Ableton has determined is pretty close to this original sample. There's that sound. So all of these uh, sounds have a similar sonic profile. They probably, in this first little example, they probably are similar in frequency content and in decay, okay? But another thing I could do is I could simply drag this kick drum into a drum rack, okay? Now check this out. If I click this button right here, boom. And look, you can similar sound search inside of drum rack, okay? This is why, in my opinion, I'm not going to go through and tag on my drum samples at the moment. I'm actually going to wait and hope that enough of the community requests this for Ableton to create some sort of auto-tagging system. I believe it'll happen. I really do. I really think that it might be until Ableton 13 or who knows what, but I, I feel like eventually all of our samples are going to just be auto-tagged because it's such a big thing. Like, I even have, I have that XLN plugin. Atlas, right? I even have Atlas. I mean, this thing does that. It just scans all the samples and then puts them in uh, subcategories. Like, for example, um, like all the tambourines, hi-hats, claps, and stuff like that. There's other plugins that do this, and they all say, well, this is AI. It's not AI. It's machine learning. It's not the same thing. So I don't really care about that. That's not a feature that I'm personally worried about or that I care about. I can find the sounds that I want to use super fast using this method where I'm simply just saving searches, okay? So how you save a search, again, is unique to you. It's super important for you to get in there and do the thing that is you, okay? Think about the sounds and the plugins and the samples and the instruments and the devices that you use all the time and save those searches, okay? And remember, Commander Control F, it's your best friend. Awesome. Hope you enjoyed this. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Much love, everybody. See you next time.